because I wake up tomorrow morning and decide that I'm not going to obey God doesn't change the fact that I could wake up tomorrow morning and decide to obey him. Hello. And it doesn't change the fact that God created me perfect in salvation. In salvation, I am a perfect creature. Are you working with me? I'm created without sin. Now, I can choose because God didn't take my will from me. Are you hearing? He just like he did Adam. He made Adam perfect. Wasn't he perfect? Did not he make the devil perfect? Uh, Satan, uh, Lucifer. He made him perfect, didn't it? Scripture says in Isaiah 14, he was perfect until when? Till, till the day iniquity was found in him, in his heart. So who created the iniquity? Satan created his own iniquity. How did he create it? You say lust, but how, how, where does lust come from? Wrong thinking. So when, when, when Lucifer woke up one morning and decided, well, you know, I'm going to exalt my throne above that of the Most High. That's a sin. Even the thought of, of elevating yourself above God, who is your creator, is a sin. So his desire, the desires of his heart, caused him to begin to wrong think. Is that right? He began to think wrong, and so therefore he did wrong. Are you working with me? Same thing is true with us. If God created Lucifer perfect, if God created Adam perfect, what does that mean? Now watch God. Watch God now. Watch God. God creates a man. Adam was a living soul. He was not a quickening spirit. He was a living soul. Is that right? So he, he wasn't full of the Holy Ghost like we're supposed to be. Right? But God said to this man that was a living soul, this man that the scriptures declares was a natural man. God says to this, this natural man, there's a tree over there. You can, have, you, can, you can eat from all of the trees except that one. You can touch all of the trees, eat of them, but don't touch that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't touch it. He said, now, Adam, the day you touch it, you shall surely die. Is that right? So God expected Adam to get up every day of his life and walk by that tree and not touch it. And as long as he didn't touch it, he was perfect. Come on. Hello. As long as he, when he, if, he, if he walked by there and just didn't even pay it any attention. Now, the Bible says Adam was not deceived. So that means that he was fully cognizant of everything he did. Eve was the one that was caught in the transgression. What does that mean? That means that when, when the serpent began to speak to her, she got caught, in, in emotionally caught inside of what he said. She desired when he said, God know that if you eat of this tree, you'll be like him. Well, that was appealing. What was so appealing about that? Because notice what he said. He said, God knows that the day that you eat of this tree, you'll be like gods, like the gods. What, is, what was he talking about? What was he talking about? He was telling her that she'd be like the angels. If she ate of that tree, she would be wise like them, and she would be able to escape the limitations of the flesh. Come on, are you hearing God? She would be able to escape the limitations of her, her flesh. So she ate. She was deceived. She ate. And then... She offered something to Adam. Now the Bible said he wasn't deceived. So what caused him to eat? Was there something in Adam when God created him? Was there something in him that forced him to eat? No. If he wasn't, and he wasn't tricked. He wasn't beguiled. He wasn't deceived. According to Paul, he wasn't deceived. So what caused him to eat? Choice. 
What was his choice? He made a conscious decision to do what? Disobey God. Here is a perfect man. Perfect, has no enemies. Can you imagine being in a world where you have no enemies? None? Being in a world where you rule, even the a animals are subject to you. you, you know, come, come here, baby, let me give you a name. No, I was talking about the animals. <laughs> I was talking about the animal. <laughs> Ooh, you just lost. <laughs> You lost your coupons. <laughs> Glory to God. So he said, <laughs> he called forth the animals and he named them. Ruler of the whole planet. Perfect. But made a choice. Made a choice. Didn't have the Holy Ghost living in him. Come on now but made a choice. Are you working with me? Didn't have Satan living in him, but did what? Made a choice. Now we got God living in us, those of us that are born again. We have God living in us, and when we sin, we do what? Make a choice. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing him? Praise you, Jesus. All right, let's go a little bit further here. For, for then would they not have ceased to be offered mm -hmm. because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Okay, now, if these sacrifices, now watch, listen to this. If these sacrifices was going to get the job done, if they were going to make someone perfect, then once a, a sacrifice was offered, the conscience, a man's conscience, should have been purged of the sin. Is that right? He would have no more conscience of sin. If, 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 we, if we're going to walk in perfection, we cannot have a conscience that is dead in sins. We got to have a conscience that is not under captivity of the enemy, of the devil. It cannot be under, the, under captivity, the spirit of bondage. And it must be free, amen, because the word conscience is what? What is the, what is, what is the um, Greek definition of conscience? What else is it called? The, the what? The knower. What does it know? The conscience is a judge. He's able to judge good and evil. He knows he knows God. He knows the mind of God. When, when Adam woke up, when, when God blew the breath of life in him, nobody had to tell him who God was. The conscience has divine intellect. It knows God. It knows righteousness. And it knows evil, too. It knows what is not God. Are you working with me? So, therefore, the conscience is that part of our spiritual makeup that is able to judge right from wrong. Are you working with me? Glory to God. It's that part of our spiritual makeup that bothers us when we do wrong, if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, you can do wrong, go to sleep, and don't worry about things. But if you're really born of God and you do something wrong, it's supposed to bother your conscience. And if it doesn't, you better check whether you're saved. Come on, because you can speak to someone wrong Snap at them or whatever, and your conscience is supposed to bother you. Hello. But oftentimes we override the conscience because we don't want to humble ourselves. Hello. We don't want to humble ourselves and go back to people that we've offended, knowing that we've offended, because we feel, amen, that humility somehow gives people an advantage over us. When in actuality, humility makes us strong. Are you working with me? All right, so this sacrifice, these animal sacrifices, this, we got to see the parallel here. These animal sacrifices could not purge the conscience of sin. 
if a man was going to walk in perfection, he had to have his conscience purged. Why was that necessary? Because when Adam sinned, every man after Adam, man or woman, was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So we inherited Adam's sin. Is that right? And God deal with seed. As far as God is concerned, all of Adam's children were lost. Didn't matter if they were born 6,000 years ago or yesterday. It's still lost. So if there's going to be any salvation here for mankind, then man has to have a sacrifice that can make him perfect, a sacrifice that can purge his conscience. Now what he keeps telling us here is that these sacrifices that they made under the law couldn't do that. So that means that God now is, you think maybe God, you know, sending Jesus, you think maybe God sending Jesus uh, could accomplish what the law couldn't do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You think maybe... Um, I want us to look, um, I'm losing my voice again. Um, <clears throat> I want us to look uh, there's a scripture. There's a scripture here. Well, let me read this one. Let's finish this one out. Let's finish this one out before I go to there, go there. Um, finish reading, please. But in those sacrifices, mm -hmm. there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. In other words, the, the, the priests had to continuously offer up sacrifices for the people. You got two million people out in the wilderness. Amen. And they, uh, the, 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 only, the only religion among two million people <laughs> was Judaism. But they, the priests had to continuously offer up sacrifices every year. They had to go back and pray for the same sins. They had to offer up sacrifices to deliver the people from sin. Actually, there was no deliverance. They covered the sin with that sacrifice. Amen? It's called the Day of Atonement. All right? Read on. For it is not possible mm -hmm. that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Now, notice what he said. The blood of bulls and goats couldn't do what? Now, now we've, had, we, we've seen this in a different connotation. I want you to see it differently today. Most times when people preach this, they preach it from the perspective that the blood of bulls and goats and rams and doves and all that couldn't take away sin, and they're coming from the perspective Jesus washed, his blood washed away my sin. Right? Hello? The blood of Jesus washed away my sin. Now, let's, let's look at the, the, the schoolmaster here, because the old covenant is supposed to be our schoolmaster. Isn't that right? So now, On the Day of Atonement, there were, two, there were two animals, two rams used. One, the high priest would, um, the Bible says, he would put his hands on him, and he would hold, his, he would hold the, the animal's head very hard. Very, he put a lot of pressure. He'd hold that animal's head. And he would pray all of the sins of the nation onto that animal. Is that right? All of the sins, he would, he would put the, all those sins on that animal. Then the scripture says the animal, the ram, was turned over to a strong man. Right? And that strong man would take that ram, 
so far from the encampment until the animal couldn't find his way back. That's very important. He would take that animal so far away from where they were camped until there was, it was impossible for that animal to find his way back to the encampment. Because the symbolism there is that if the animal came back, the sin came back. Sin was still upon him. So when we think in terms of the blood of Jesus washing away our sins, it did, he didn't wash away our sins for them to come back again. Are you, are you, are you hearing this? Now, somebody pray and ask God to show me how to explain this. Um, so that you can see it even clearer. When, this, when, when we are born of God, when we are born of God, the sacrifice of Jesus, scripture, hold where you are and look at... Um, Colossians 2 and 14. We come right back to where you were, so just put a, put a little. Um. Colossians 2 and 14. Mm -hmm. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, mm -hmm. which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Okay, now all of the law that was against us, all of the law that was against us. Let me get comfortable here. The scripture says that Jesus took it out of the way. Every ordinance that was against us. Because what is, what is this really saying? It's saying that the penalty for sin is what? What is the penalty for sin? The penalty for sin is death. So what he's, what he's really saying is all of those, that, that, that law, the law that we had broken, and all the, the ordinances that we had broken, that God say, don't do this, don't do that. Amen. The scripture says he took it out of the way. Why? Because he nailed it to the cross. Now, why, why, why does it reference nailing it to the cross? <coughs> Hallelujah. Why does he go to the reference he nailed it to the cross? The reason is, and you'll find it in, in, back in Hebrews 9 and 10 chapter, read one of the, <clears throat> both of those chapters, you'll see it there. The reason being that we had sin. All of our sin was laid on Jesus, right? On his way to the cross, he took on all of our sin. Is that right? So his body now, on his body, the Bible says he that knew no sin became sin. So now his body was a reservoir for our sin. Even though he had no sin of his own, his body became a reservoir for our sin. So now the soul that sinners must die. The whipping, the beating that he endured in the flesh was the chastisement. Remember, remember Isaiah. Isaiah 53, he says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Is that right? In other words, his flesh was chastened so that ours wouldn't have to be. Are you understanding? In other words, he, he paid the penalty, which was chastisement of the flesh and complete separation from God because the soul had to go into hell. Is that right? The soul went in, his soul went to hell. He said he knew, according to the psalm, that my father would not leave my soul where? 
in hell. So we know that Jesus' soul went into hell to pay the price so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. Come on, are y'all working with me? Glory to God. But I want to focus on, on the flesh today. I want you to see how that when the scripture says he nailed it to the cross, all of the sin and the penalty for it was nailed to the cross. Now, how does that affect us? Do you, do you understand the nailing to the cross first? All right. So that body, here we, now you can come. <laughs> this body, this body that has taken on sin. Do I have, can I get a lap cloth here, please? One of those big lap cloths. Okay. This body took on the sin. Looks more like a robe of righteousness and <laughs> royalty here. But he took this now. This is Jesus. He represents Jesus taking on our sin. So the sin that we committed now was placed where? In his body. Placed on his body. Right? Now, the law said he that, he that commits sin must die. Right? So what did Jesus do? We're talking atonement here. Jesus died for everybody on the planet. He didn't just die for those of us who are saved today. He died for everybody. Come on, are you hearing God? He died for every man and every woman. Jesus died. Are you hearing God? And, but now in order for you to, to uh, be a partaker in order for you to be a partaker of this, this sacrifice, you got to believe on him. And you got to accept him. Is that right? That's what makes you a partaker of this, of this uh, uh, salvation that Jesus wrought for us. So he takes on the sin. And now the sin is in his body. And, his, and the law is against him. The Bible said that he humbled himself all the way to death. He humbled himself. He submitted to death. Now, that's, that's, that's got to be something because, because in him was the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit of life. That's why they couldn't kill this flesh. They couldn't kill this man. Jesus had to give up the ghost. He said, no man can take my life. I got to give it up. Come on, as long as the Holy Ghost was in this body, it couldn't die. Are you hearing God? It could not die. But so in the ordinances that were against it, the sin that was in it, all of it got nailed to the cross. All of it got nailed to the cross. Right? Soul goes into hell. Stays in the hell three days and nights until God is satisfied. Body goes down, lays in the tomb. This body is taken off the cross and put in the tomb. Now, after God is satisfied, what happens? God raises the body back up. Right? He raises the body back up. No sin. Right? Raises Jesus up. Are you hearing God? Now, I want you to make, I want you to connect the dots. Raises Jesus up. So, the Bible says in Psalm 2 that he was born again. Right? So, that means that he was born once through Mary. He died, and he was born again. Now, why was he, why did he have to be born again? Because he died the death of a sinner. Come on, somebody. He died the death of a sinner. And so now God raises that body up. Now, the Bible says God raised him from the dead. And he said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. Isn't that, isn't that what it says? Ooh, that's a good scripture. We're going to have to deal with that. Amen. So now that tells us, though, what raised this body up. It was the Holy Ghost. 
right? The Holy Ghost raised this body up. So now, here Jesus has the Holy Ghost in him again. He's got the Holy Ghost in him. He has lived a life for 33 and a half years and didn't sin. He has been nailed to the cross for the chastisement of our sin. He has gone into hell and was tormented for three days and nights, paying the penalty for our sin, and then was resurrected by the Father. Man, what an adventure. Now, what does that have to do with us, though? Hallelujah. Now watch this. Let's see which scripture I want to use first here. Jesus having the Holy Ghost in him. Look in Romans 3. Get Romans 3 and 8. Yes, that's the scripture I was looking for. What does it say? Romans 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And not. I'm sorry, Romans 8, verse 3. <laughs> okay, a little dyslexia here. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Romans 8 and 3. Uh huh. For what the law could not do. For what the law couldn't do. It, wasn't that what we were talking about? The law couldn't make a man perfect. Right? Law couldn't make a man perfect. Law couldn't purge the conscience. Right? Law couldn't really take away sin. All those ordinances and all that sacrificing of those animals couldn't really take away the sin. Is that right? It just covered. Amen. Just, made, just kept God from killing them. Amen? But now look at this. For what the law couldn't do. In that it was weak through the flesh. Because it was weak through the flesh. In other words, this man would come and offer up a sacrifice. A lamb, a ram, a bull, or a goat. And the priest would kill that animal. Put him on the altar. Burn him up. And take the blood and sprinkle this man with him. Okay, you've offered a sacrifice for all your sins now, so you're okay with God. God won't kill you, all right? But this, but this man was still in the flesh. He was still in the flesh, so next week he went and did the same thing. Or next month he went and did the same thing. And so guess what? He got to come back again, bring another sacrifice, offer it up, glory to God, and then he's in good standing with God because he offered up a, a ram. Of a, but then next week he did the same thing. Do you understand what he's saying here? Those sacrifices could not make him perfect. It could not purge his conscience of sin. Is that not what the scripture is teaching us? Amen. All right. But for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. What else he say? God sending his own son in uh -huh. the likeness of sinful flesh uh -oh. and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Okay, now I want you to look at this. Hallelujah. This has a twofold meaning, well, same meaning, two occurrences. All right? I want you to see the depths of this particular verse. It says Jesus now God sent Jesus to condemn sin in the flesh. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. What do we talk about? Jesus was the Lord from heaven. Mary gave him a body, but God overshadowed her. Did he not? And, and what, what was the term? He, what was the term? So that, so that Jesus could dwell in that body? Circumcision. Amen. So God circumcised that flesh that was called Jesus. Amen. Because if he had not circumcised or had not overshadowed her with the Holy Spirit, then now Jesus would have inherited Adam's sin. Like every other man that was born. Is it, are you understanding that? So now Jesus coming in the likeness of sinful flesh. That's what that means. He, he looked like us. 
He was, it was a human body. It was a human body that Jesus was in. But, but there was one difference. It was not sinful. It did not have the law of sin and death working in it. it de- so Jesus didn't desire sin, right? There was nothing in him like the devil was living in us. There wasn't no devil living in him. God was living in him. However, that doesn't mean he didn't have the ability to sin. Oh, you better hear me. Because if he didn't have the ability to sin, Jesus our Lord had the ability to sin. If he didn't, then the whole temptation on, in the wilderness would have just been a farce. Come on. The scripture says he was led by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness to be what? Tempted by the devil. Glory to God. The devil said, if you the son of God, cast, cast yourself down. Jesus says, it's written. Don't tempt the Lord. If you the son of God, turn these, turn these stones to bread. It is written, the man should not live by bread alone. So he had the ability. If, if, if Jesus couldn't sin, what good would it do for the devil to try to get him to sin? If he can't sin. So what did Jesus do? He chose not to. Come on, somebody. He simply chose not to. Glory to God. Now, did not the scripture tell us that he's our example? All right. And I need you to see something. I need you to see that Jesus is our example in every aspect of the word example. Okay. So now here he walks around 33 and a half years in a body that didn't have no uh, spirit of iniquity in it. No law of sin and death working in it. No motions of sin that was causing him, his members to lust with evil concupiscence. None of that was going on in that flesh. So of course now, when he was resurrected, same thing is true, right? So now we look at this man, he looks human because the body was human, right? The body was human, but it was in the likeness of sinful flesh. It wasn't sinful. That's the only difference. It didn't have the spirit of iniquity dwelling in it. Now, the scripture says he came to condemn sin in the flesh. So he, first of all, how does he condemn it? First of all, the walk that Jesus had here on the earth, the 33 and a half year walk that he had on here on the earth, was an example of our walk today. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was an example of how we are to walk today in every sense of the word example. Because if you are born again, this man here is born again. Pastor Ricky is born again. So now he is just as Jesus was. His body, because he's born again, no more spirit of iniquity living inside of it. Because he's born again, no more law of sin and death working in it. Because he's born again, it is not sinful flesh. It's just a likeness. He still looks like Ricky. He still is Ricky. Amen. The body is still the same body. Hello? But it's been changed. What's the change? What's this called? Circumcision. That's the difference in a saint and a sinner. The saint has, body has been circumcised to remove the propensity to sin. So this body has no propensity to sin. Now, but let me show you something here. Let me show you something here. Jesus prayed in the 17th chapter of St. John when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, give me the glory that I had with thee before the world was. Right? The glory that Jesus had before the world was was that he was an eternal spirit. Are y'all working with me? He was an eternal spirit, and he was that eternal spirit being in the Godhead made him omnipresent. So now here we go. He says, give me that glory. And then he says, he says, and I got another request, Father. He says, those that thou hast given me, I pray that they may be with me and behold what? My glory. Now, what is all of this about? I want you to read this scripture here. Ah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to read this scripture here. Where is it? 
Okay. Oh, in the 17th chapter of St. John, that's where it is. Um, oh, hallelujah. I'm just trying to find the verse here. It's in St. John 17. He says um, in the second verse, St. John 17 and 2, what does it say? St. John 17 and 2, mm -hmm. as thou hast given him power over all flesh, mm -hmm. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay, now, this is what that means for us. Come on, Pastor Matt. Uh, um, all right, step back here. Notice Jesus says, Father, now this, now he is praying a prophetic prayer or hearing God. He's praying a prophetic prayer. He's praying as if this has already happened. One thing about it, the will of God is already determined. So he's praying according to the will of God. Amen? Praying according to his assignment. So he says now, all right, be because give me the glory that I had with you. I want to be that spirit. And I want the people that you gave me to be with me so that they can behold my glory. Now watch this here. He says, now, you have, because you have given me power over all flesh. This is what I want us to understand. I want to make this point today and make sure I make it. All right? You've given me power over all flesh. What is all, what it got to do with the cost of eggs? He's saying, put it in the context. It says, um, as thou has given me power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given, uh, given to him. Now, this is what he's saying. I have power over all flesh. This is how it relates to us. I died for the entire world. I died for the China, Chinese. I died for the India. <laughs> what are you? What, which one are you? <laughs> mix up, mix up. Amen. <laughs> every nationality, every race, I died for the male, I died for the female. I've got power over all of this flesh. If they accept me, are you getting this? If, they, if, if, if these people would just say, Lord, save me. If they would humble themselves, because all I'm offering them is an opportunity to escape going to hell. Because if they die without me, they're going straight to hell. And there's no repentance on the other side of the grave. They will spend eternity in hell, and it'll make this lifetime seem like a vapor. If you live to be 100 years old, glory to God, on this side, you have not, that's not even a second in hell. Because hell is eternal. Are you hearing God? It's eternal torment. So Jesus said, now, if they would humble themselves and hear the preaching of the cross, hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, and believe it, and ask me to save them, hello, hello, if they would ask me to save them, I would take their souls, oh, hallelujah. Uh, portraits, come, give me, give me some souls. I need three souls. And, and, and uh, Evangelist Clifton, come.
Which each one of you stand behind each each one of them. Now, Brother Clifton, you 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 got blessed today. You're gonna be the Holy Ghost. You're gonna be Jesus. All right. Now the people that's standing behind these people, let's say that's their soul. Okay? That's their soul. Now. And let's do this. Give me a give me a young man. Yes, sir, please. I need one more. Come on, uh, Xavier. Oh. oh, I just recognized who you were. Okay. Now, all three of these, even though they they look very different, uh, let's just pretend that they all look just alike. And they're Jesus. This is Jesus, right? Each one of them is Jesus. Hello? Do I have a church here? Amen. All right. So each one of them is Jesus, even though they look different. Amen. Let's just pretend that they all are the same person. Okay? So this is the soul. Each one of these people in the back here is the soul of the man and in, in, woman in front. Right? So now when a person cries out, cries out to be saved, what gets saved? What gets saved? What gets saved? All right, so save me, Jesus. Save my soul. I don't want to go to hell. What's going to hell? Not the body. Body going back to the dust. What's going to hell? Soul. With all its memories, all its feelings, all its emotions going into hell. So now, when, when Jesus answers their prayer, Jesus takes these, the soul out of the body and put it where? In the Holy Ghost. Come on. She got saved. He gets saved. He gets saved. So now their soul is hidden in Christ. Right? Hello? Amen. To be what? Preserved. To be preserved. So now when the soul is in Christ, watch this. When the soul leaves the body, the body is what? <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> you, you, we just pretend you're dead. So the body is dead, right? Hello? Because what? The, 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 the body without the spirit is what? Dead. So, if, so this, is, this is what you got to see. At salvation, if we had a slow motion camera, a slow motion spiritual camera, that is, we would see how when God saves a person, he takes the soul out of the flesh and put it in him. Now, the soul is clothed in the spirit. Come on, somebody. He is clothed in the spirit. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. The Bible says that we are hidden in Christ, right? Now, this is, we're still in slow motion here. Body dies. This all happens before you can blink your eye. That's how quick it is. So now, the Bible says, and read this when you get home, Romans 6 says we were planted with him, right? In death, so now we shall be in his resurrection, right? The same spirit, and this is what the scripture said, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Those of you that are watching by way of television, those of you that are watching by, on the internet, whatever, however you're getting this, get this. You need to get this. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall do what? Quicken your what? Mortal body. What does quicken mean? To bring alive. So now, Jesus now raises this body up. Jesus raises that body. Jesus 
raises this body. Now notice what he says. I've got power over all this flesh. Are you seeing this? I've got power over all flesh. So what is he saying? He's saying, I got the power over this flesh. I got the power over it. Why do I have the power over it? Because I'm in it. I'm in this flesh. 1 John 3. 1 John 3 and 8. 1 John. What does it say? 1 John 3 and 8. Mm -hmm. He that committeth sin mm -hmm. is of the devil. All right. Now, notice what is, this is what he, what he mean by that. This is what he mean. Before Jesus <laughs> Come here, little Robinson. Oh, wait a minute. I need a yeah, yeah. Come, come, come. You got a dark shirt. Yeah. Come. You gotta be the devil. <laughs> he that Committed sin is of the devil. That meant before she met Jesus, guess who was living in her? Satan was living in us. Are you getting this? Satan was living in this body. So she didn't do anything but what? Commit sin. So the person that's born, he, he that, read, the script, read that scripture again. He, he that committed he sin. Is of the devil. Is of the devil. Mean that the devil belongs to amen this person belongs to the devil jesus said you are of your what the devil is our father if we don't know god then the devil is our daddy and he lives inside of us he lived inside of us remember before we met the lord is that not true so he so the scripture saying that if that if you're committing sin this body is committing sin. It's because this thing lives in this body and it's causing what? The motions of sin is working where? In its what? Yeah. Members. And it's, and it's creating a law. And that law is called the law of what? Sin and, sin and death. All right, you're getting it. Okay. And so now that is called captivity. Because when I would, when she would do good, Evil is present with her. She delights in the law of God after her inward man, her soul, but she finds another law working where? In her what? Members bringing her into captivity. Are you working with me? So now, who shall deliver her from this body of death? This is a body of sin and death. Who's going to get me out of this body of sin and death? So she calls on Jesus. And when she calls on Jesus, when Jesus comes in, he gets rid of this, 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 this spirit of iniquity. So when Jesus takes out the spirit of iniquity, what is that called? Circumcision of the flesh. That's what I want you to see. The, now her flesh is circumcised. His flesh is circumcised. His flesh is circumcised. It's just like Jesus' body was when he was walking here. There is no more sin and death working in these, these bodies. Are you hearing God? Because they have received Jesus. Now read the rest of that, that verse. Now this is what the church does not want to accept, but this is the mind of God, and this is the heart of God, and this is the word of God. Amen. Read it. For the devil sinneth from the beginning uh -huh. for this purpose the Son of God was manifested. Now, God, Jesus, God sent Jesus. Jesus was manifested because the devil made us sin. The devil had control of the flesh. He controlled the body. He created desires in us. Jesus said it was his lust that we were doing. Come on, are you working with me? Amen. So this body couldn't help but sin because Satan was living in it. However, read the next verse. Whosoever is born of God. Uh-oh, tables have turned. 
She's called on Jesus. He's called on Jesus. They've called on Jesus. Jesus has saved them. Took the soul out of the flesh. I got the souls over here and I haven't brought them back yet. Took the soul out of the flesh. We're still in slow motion. Now Jesus is in this body. Read the next line. For a seed remaineth. Read, read, start at the beginning. Whosoever is born of God. Whosoever is born of God. Now, remember this. When Jesus was in the tomb, his body was in the tomb, right? Then the, the spirit of God stepped in the tomb and raised him from the dead. Right? So the scripture declares that he was born again. So when I took the soul, God did, took the soul out of these bodies, these bodies were dead. Is that right? Hello? So now when Jesus gets in this body and raises it from the dead, now the body is what? Born again. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Don't be afraid to say that. The body is born again because it died with Christ and it rose with Christ. Come on, somebody. It's not spiritual. It's still flesh and blood. But it died. It died. And when something dies and lives again, it's been born again. Come on. But this time, it's not born. The scripture say, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Come on. But we received a spirit of life here. Are you, are you working with me? So now, he, what does it mean when Jesus say, when Jesus makes a statement, you gave me power over all flesh. This is what it means. He that is born of God. What does it say? Does not what? Sin. What does it say? For his seed remaineth in him. He that is born of God does what? Not commit sin. Does not commit sin. For Why? His, for his seed remaineth in him. Okay. Because Jesus remains in this body, this body can't sin on its own. Because it's born of God. So Jesus said, I've taken over the flesh now. I got power over the flesh. Don't tell me your body made you do it. That's what he's saying. You can no longer tell me, oh, if it wasn't for this body, if it wasn't for this flesh, I could really live holy. He said, my seed, if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, this, this, you don't have this power. Glory to God. But he said, if you're born again, his seed is going to remain in the flesh. Come on, are you hearing God? And, and because his seed remains in the flesh, now you don't have the testimony when I would do good, evil is present. Where's the evil? The evil gone. The evil is gone. So you don't have that excuse anymore because this body now bec used to be a body of sin, but now it's what? The body of Christ. Why is it the body of Christ? Because Christ remaineth in the flesh and he has power over the flesh. You know what that means? Power over the flesh? That means this, the glory to God. i tell you what it means. Look in Romans 8. Whew, my time about up. Two, two, three, two more minutes. Give me two, three minutes. Amen. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. Glory to God. Before I go there, where's the soul? Soaked. Soul is hidden. Where? In Christ. So what is his role here? He's a what? He's a what? A witness. He, he's a witness. What is he witnessing? He's witnessing what Jesus is doing through the flesh. Now watch this here. Watch this here. This right here is going to bless all of us because he said, I got power over all flesh. But did I just take you to a scripture? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For 
for the law for the law of, of the spirit of life in has, Christ Jesus has made us hath made me free from, from the law of sin and death so you are free miss soul you free you free from the law of sin and death because the law of sin and death was in the flesh come on somebody come on now it's no longer there there's nothing here but Jesus are we getting this there's nothing here but Jesus. So the soul is going along for the ride. The soul is the one that testifies. The soul is the one that gives an explanation of what's going on in this body. And it, because this is the body of Christ. So whatever's happening in this body is supposed to be what Jesus is doing. So Jesus don't want to sit up and watch porn all night. Jesus has no interest in going to a nightclub and, 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 and you know hanging around a bunch of half-naked women. That's not his desire. Hello? His body doesn't want to do that. Are you, are you here? Why? Because there's no more, there's nothing there that gives him a desire to do that. This body is born of God again. It's born, amen, of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost brought it back alive. Come on, are you hearing God? When I say the born of the Holy Ghost, I mean the Holy Ghost brought it back alive. Are you working with me? And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. There's no law of sin and death that is more powerful than my will. Come on, somebody. More powerful than my conscience. No, there's, the devil has no law here because he has been evicted. This, this spirit of iniquity has been taken out of the flesh and he is gone away. And guess what? He can't come back because he is sealed. This, hallelujah. He can't even come back. Remember the ram was taken so far he couldn't find his way back? That sin cannot, the devil can't touch this. Are you hearing this? The devil can't touch this. This is what he's saying. He's going to stay in the body. The seed is going to remain in it. Now, he said he got power of all flesh. Do you see that? So now the, the flesh doesn't sin on its own. It doesn't have that, that, that longing for sin, evil concupiscence that it had before. Right? We got that? But there's something else that happened here. Look at this scripture right here. Last scripture, I promise you. Because I'm getting hungry. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> God. Well, it's the truth. Amen. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, oh yeah. Ah, let's see. Now, let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter. Woo okay, now. Let's go to the fifth chapter first, Ephesians 5. Let's go there first. And whew, twenty-nine and thirty. Ephesians five, verse twenty-nine. Mm -hmm. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, okay. but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. Uh -huh. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Now, what does that really mean? That means that Jesus now, he was planted in the earth, a single grain of corn, single seed. But now the seed has germinated, right? And the scripture says, we are now members of his flesh and bone of his bone. So that means now, if Jesus is on the earth now, is he here? Okay, he's here. Where? 
Where is he? He's in the kingdom of God comes without what? Observation. It's just like the wind. You can't see it, but when it blows, you know it's there. Hallelujah. The world couldn't see him when he came because he's a spirit. Huh? But when this body does what it do, <laughs> does what it does, amen. When this body walks in the character of Christ and performs the works of God, now that's the wind blowing. Come on. Now the world's, glory to God, they can see the wind. Amen. They can see the evidence, rather, of the wind blowing. Why? Because to look upon her and see, and look upon him and see Christ operating, see Christ operating through this flesh, huh? Let's the world know that Jesus is still alive. How does he look? Does he look like he did when he was walking the earth? Not right now he doesn't. He looks like them. Because he's, he's in her. He's in him. He's in him. So this is his bone and his flesh. This is his bones and his flesh. This is his bone and his flesh. We got that? Now read the scripture right here. Look in the third, the uh, second chapter. Hallelujah. 14 and 15th verse. Ephesians 2 and 14. Uh -huh. For he is our peace uh -huh. who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Okay, talking about the Jew and the Gentile. <clears throat> middle wall of partition. What separated the Jew from the Gentile? What separated the Jews from the Gentile? First of all, God chose the Jews as his chosen people. That's number one. He gave them the law that he didn't give to the Gentiles. Hello. So there was a separation. God called the Jews his people. He called the Gentiles dogs. Call us dogs. Hello. But I'm like the lady. Even the dogs can eat the crumbs that fall from the table. Just give me the crumb. I don't have to have the whole meal. Just give me the crumbs. Praise you, Jesus. Are you hearing God? So the scripture declares that he broke down, he tore down the middle wall of petition, the law that separated the Jew from the Gentile. And notice what he did here. Read on. Having abolished in his flesh the uh -huh. enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Now, I just told you about that. He nailed them to the cross. Right? Hello? Those things that were against us were nailed to the cross. Is that right? The law that was against us. Now, for but what happened after that? For to do what? For to make in himself. To make in himself, in Christ. Mm -hmm. Of twain. Of two. One new man. How many? One new man. How many? One. So making peace. All right. He made one new man. One new man. That means this, is, this, this body is Christ. This body is Christ. And this body is Christ. Whew, how could you be Christ? You're a female. One new man. Now, let's see if we can find the scripture that verifies that. Amen. Uh, oh, let's see. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to Colossians. 
Colossians, third chapter, verse 9. Colossians 3, verse uh, 9. Uh -huh. Lie not one to another. Don't lie to each other. Seeing that he have put off the... Seeing that you, have, or ye... Mm -hmm. <laughs> seeing that ye have put off the old man with you his have deeds... You put off the... Who? Old man. Who was the old man? The devil. No. No, no, no. Who was the old man? The body of sins. This was a body of sin when the devil was living in it. Remember? But we got rid of the, the spirit of iniquity, and we, the, we took the soul out. It slayed the flesh. Now we raise the flesh back up. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead has quickened this mortal body. Right? So the old man, we done put him off. This is a new man. Somebody say, my body is a new man. My body is the new man. Now, that's true if you're born again. If you're born again, your, your body is the new man. He don't want to fornicate. Hello. He doesn't want to lie. He doesn't want to cheat. He doesn't want to steal. He's a new man. Your body is a new man, right? You put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So what is it saying? It's saying this body is just like Jesus was when he was here 2,000 years ago. It's saying that this body is just like Jesus was when he was here 2,000 years ago, has the same sentiment, same desire, same purpose, same motivation, and same commitment to God, and the same faith. And if you're going to live now, you got to live by the faith of Christ, the faith that this man has. Are you hearing God? He's a new man. He's a new man. And because he's a new man, because Jesus lives in him, he has the mind of Christ. Are you working with me? Now, look at this last part of this verse. Where there is neither. Now, in Christ, all of them save. All these three save here. There's neither Jew nor Greek or Greek nor Jew, Chinese. Oh, and what else it says here? American. Jamaican, sorry about that, Jamaica. There's no Jamaicans. There are no Jamaicans. Lord, we need to say that again. There are no Jamaicans in Christ. There are no Americans in Christ. No Japanese, no Chinese, no Vietnamese, no kind of ease. In Christ Jesus. There's neither Jew nor Greek or Greek nor Jew. There's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. What is he talking about? He's saying the Jews were circumcised and the Gentiles were not. He said, but in Christ it does not matter. If you have not been circumcised, it's okay. There's neither barbarian nor Scythian. There's no bond nor free. But Christ is all and in all. Woo now, I need to find the other scripture. This talks about the male and the female. We need to get that on here. Glory to God. Somebody give me that scripture right quick. You scholars out there, I know you guys know. Hallelujah. Where's the scripture? Galatians? 3. And 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. Oh, wait a minute. Say it again. Say it again. Say it loud. <laughs> There's neither what? Male, male nor female. 
So that means that if Christ wants to use you to preach the gospel, he can. And if Christ wants to use me to preach the gospel, guess what? He can because it's Christ in all. Come on. There's no Jew, Greek, no male, nor female, no bond, no free. Now, when they start preaching this, these preachers, preachers, I'm talking to you now. When you start preaching this here, don't leave off them no male, nor female. You, you know, you got that bond, nor, bond, nor free, and you got that Jew, nor Greek. Oh, you preach that hard. But why not preach no male, nor female? Glory to God. Because, see, if you can't preach that, that means you got an agenda. Oh, come on, somebody. That means that you have an agenda that's not God's agenda. Or number two, you feel threatened. Oh, come on, guys. It's, you know, we don't, you don't have to be threatened by real women ministers of God. Because real ministers, female ministers of God, those that have a female body, they know how to walk in the humility of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. They know how to walk in that humility of Christ. But to say that God cannot use them as well as he uses the male factor is an insult to salvation. It's an insult to the scripture because God did not make that distinction. He said each one of us that are born again are just Christ. Christ is all and in all. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. <laughs> Dr. Leverage. Hallelujah. My soul just feel like praising Jesus right about now. So my soul... My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit just feel like praising his name right about now. Because of my understanding of what he's done for me, and what he's done in me. Hallelujah. 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 We don't have to sin. Christ lives in us. And we are his temple. This body is his temple. I just thank God for what he's done in our lives. I just thank God for how he's speaking to us. I just thank God for his goodness and his mercy and his grace. Hallelujah. I thank him for his patience, his gentleness, his long suffering. He suffered long with me even after I had the Holy Ghost, but he brought me to a point of understanding. Hallelujah. I just love the Lord today. Hallelujah. Can we just stand on our feet? Stand on our feet and just give the Lord the best praise you can find right about now. Let your soul know how much you appreciate him. Let your soul roar towards heaven. Hallelujah. And give him praise. Give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. I thank him and I praise him. I praise him that he's a holy God. I praise him that he has holy children. Hallelujah. I praise him that the way of holiness is not difficult. I praise him that I'm a witness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a witness, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost, of the work that was done and the work that he's doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
There is a soul in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A soul in this house Woo. that heard this message Hallelujah. has not gotten it yet. Woo. And say, I want that. Woo. I want the Holy Ghost. Yes. My soul is running for that.